Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, October 30th, 2015. Today we have a very interesting eBay video lined up for you with a lot of important updates and announcements. If you're wondering why I'm filming this video inside, it was not my plan. I had everything set up to film the video outside as usual, and just as I'm ready to start, you got these landscapers come again, and they do the house over here. All right, how long could it take, 45 minutes? Because nobody around here wants to do their own leaves. I've never seen such lazy people. All right, I wait 45 minutes, they finish the house, and they start on the house over here. In fact, you can probably still hear some of the machinery from inside, because I can hear it, so I'm imagining you can too, but I just can't wait any longer. I gotta get to work. But anyway, we have a lot to discuss, so let's get to it. I wanna discuss the Danger Dolan video. I wanna discuss more about my bad seller from last week. I wanna talk about the mobile app, I also want to talk about serious site issues, include eBay being down last night, which was Thursday night. This is crazy. I'll get to that later. And some other things. Let's start off with something positive that will bring a smile to all your faces. Well, most all your faces anyway. Have any of you guys ever heard the name Danger Dolan? I never have, all right? Turns out, Danger Dolan is one of these insanely popular YouTubers. He has over four, close to four million subscribers. I'm not kidding. Insanely popular. So, about two nights ago, one of my friends, Zach, sends me a text message and he says, Joe, here's a video you might want to check out. And he sends me this Danger Dolan video. So I looked at it, and the name of the video is called 10 Internet Trolls Who Were Shockingly Exposed. And I'm going to put a link to that video in the description box below. It's the only link I'm going to share this week. And it would be great if you guys would check it out. It's less than nine minutes long. And I especially want you to notice who's exposed at the two minute, 50 second mark. It is great. I love it. <laughs> yeah! Ooh, yeah! Anyway, let us now segue into the eBay section of the video. Last night, Thursday night, eBay was down. I woke up this morning and received several emails to my email account there, crazynydriver at AOL.com, with you guys complaining you couldn't get onto your account. Now, I myself didn't have that problem because I didn't go on during the wee hours. Although I was on like 10 or 11 o'clock, I think, with no problem. But I experienced many, many site issues this week. I mean, just one after the other. How many times are you trying to do something and you'll get the screen with the red warning that says, sorry, this functionality is not available right now. Constantly. I had so many of them this week, it was just unbelievable. I also tried using a feature called Markdown Manager. I have heard over the years Markdown Manager was an epic fail and that it gave a lot of people trouble. I had never used it. I decided to try and use it, and I have learned through experience that it is indeed an epic fail. I posted on this on a Facebook group early this morning, and a lot of people wrote back to me. Catherine wrote back, and a few others, and she suggested that I try Campaign Go. Have any of you guys used, or do you use Campaign Go? It's a pay service, but right now, they are offering a 30-day free trial. And I'm wondering if any of you guys use Campaign Go and do you recommend it? If so, comment below, please. In last week's video, I told you about my bad seller. 
the one who I asked you guys, should I leave this guy negative feedback or not? 90% of you guys suggested I leave him negative feedback. That did not surprise me. I'd like to address the 10% of you guys who said do not leave him negative feedback. Because there are a couple of things that I did not mention that I probably should have. And I want to put that out there right now to give you guys a clearer perspective. Number one, the item that I won, I won at the starting price. Meaning, he started the item really low. I guess he figured it would go up high and it didn't. And perhaps he didn't want to sell it to me at the starting price because he would have made very little money. It was a cheap item. I think it was like 10 bucks starting with the starting price, plus $15 shipping, and he's out of Texas. So, I mean, there would have been very little money made by him on this deal. But still, he should honor his commitment. I've lost money on quite a few deals over my eBay career because I didn't get the money I wanted, but that's too bad. I still sent the item out, and I think he was wrong for not sending it to me. Also, regarding feedback. I checked his feedback history. This person has negged three of his sellers and left neutrals for six others. So obviously he has no compunction about doing it to other sellers. Now given that information I've just supplied to you 10% and also to the rest of the gang, what do you guys think now? I really think he deserves to be negged. I don't like it. It's one thing that he didn't send me the items. All right, if something came up, it happens. And he refunded me my money, but nothing came up. Nobody was sick. Nobody was in jail. He kept telling me, oh, I'll ship them Wednesday. I'll ship them Thursday. I'll ship them Saturday. He shipped me nothing. All right? So I'd like you guys to address that if you would, please. Next, I've got an insane guest account story for you guys. As you know, I get a lot of guest account sales on my, my eBay Motors account, a lot of them. And I have no problem with that because they pay right up. I require immediate payment. So about two weeks ago, a guy makes a purchase from me, guest account. I send them the items. And I think it was Monday of this week, the box comes back to me as undeliverable, address unknown. So I wrote to the guy. And I said, tell me what you want me to do. Three days go by, I get no response. Now that did not surprise me. But now because it's a guest account, we're getting into some muddy waters here. So I called eBay yesterday to get their opinion as to what I should do. I got a rep in the USA who was a real nice guy. He tried to be helpful, but quite frankly, I could tell he was not all that well versed on many eBay facets and many eBay topics. I knew more than he did in certain ways. And I said to him, I said, sir, I said, and I would explain to him as we went along. And he, he, he said to me, Joe, I didn't know that. But anyway, he told me he would look it up. He looked up this guest account and he told me that this particular eBayer has a regular normal eBay account like you and I do but that for some reason he's been signing on using guest accounts and making multiple purchases. He even went as far as to tell me that this one eBayer has established four different guest accounts he's also working off. I was very surprised that he was that candid with me. He didn't tell me what items the guy was purchasing, but he told me that this guy is opening these guest accounts left and right instead of using his main account. So I said to the eBay rep, well, what should I do now? He goes, well, I'm going to give you his main account, which also kind of surprised me. He gave me the guy's main account and told me to contact the guy and ask him, you know, what we should do from here. But he also told me, told me that I should not ship to any alternate addresses because I'll lose my PayPal protection, which I agree with him on that. So I said to him, I said, do you think I should just contact him and cancel the sale and refund his money? And he said, yes. He goes, but would you do me a favor? He says, when you contact this buyer, would you please tell him to call into eBay? Because we need 
to consolidate all these guest accounts that are under his main account. We need to consolidate them all under his main account because he can't keep doing this. That kind of surprised me because I would think that's something eBay themselves would do instead of asking good old Joey here to do it. So anyway, I wrote to him yesterday and this morning I woke up to an email from this guy that says he wants me to reship them to the same address. I said to him, no, I'm not going to do that. I said, I already spent the shipping once. It came back to me. I'm not doing it again. All right. It's unknown and it's unverified. And I sent him a scan of the tracking information to prove it. I said, the eBay rep told me to cancel a transaction and give you your money back. And that's what I'm doing. I said, you need to sign on to your guest account. And I copied and I pasted that guest account in the message. I said, you need to sign into that guest account and accept the cancellation so you can get at your money right away. Otherwise, you'll have to wait the 10 days till it times out. Furthermore, I said, the eBay representative has requested that you call into eBay and consolidate all four of your guest accounts under your main umbrella account. I mean, never in my years on eBay have I experienced this crazy situation. And I'd like to know what your guys' take is on this. Has it ever happened to you? I think I get way more guest accounts per week than any of you guys. I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to start a contest as to who gets the most guest accounts. I had also thought about starting a contest as to who gets the most returns. I've been talking to a lot of you guys this week and most of you are complaining about the large increase in returns and I do agree with you there. Heretofore I got very few returns but I noticed starting in June I think they started going up, up and up. I mean a lot and the people I will say one thing for them with for the buyers at least they're honest they admit when they open the return or the request they say I bought the wrong size I had one the other day this is the first she says I bought these by mistake by mistake I don't get that but anyway it's not a terrible thing because I'll get the item back I can relist it I don't get a defect yes Yes, I do lose the original shipping, but there's just nothing you can do about that. Of course, you could charge for shipping. If I did charge for shipping, that would alleviate that problem right there. So, again, in the back of my mind here, back here, I am toying with the idea of starting to charge for shipping on anything over, let's say, maybe $100, or anything that's going to cost me more than $15 to ship. This way I won't lose the money. But I will lose the boost in search that eBay says they give to people who offer free shipping. So that's something to be concerned with as well. Got the eBay newsletter yesterday, as I'm sure many of you did too. My mobile percentage is 27%. Guys, what is your mobile percentage? Do you have any comments on the mobile app at all? I only use the mobile app to respond to people's questions and to view things that have been sold or have just been sold. I have not, I do not use it as a rule to list. I just can't fathom in my mind why anybody would use the mobile app rather than a Mac or a desktop, assuming they have a Mac or a desktop right there next to them. I mean, granted, if you're on the subway or something, or your, your friends and you don't have your Mac with you and you want to use your iPhone assuming you have all the pictures already stored on there well then that's one thing I can get that but as a rule I just don't see anything better than a Mac what's your opinion as I said I have experienced numerous site issues this week including but not limited to markdown manager Relisting. Several people have written in with mobile concerns where they're receiving messages there. 
Simple things like cell similar will often generate an error message for me. I would say at least one out of three times, if not one out of two times. It involves me then going back, clicking it again, and starting off again. And usually that will remedy it, but not always. I just really don't know what's going on. During the early days of eBay, I don't recall these site issues cropping up. I really don't. And remember guys who you're talking to here, you're talking to eBay number one fanboy, Joseph DeMarco, eBay user ID, Hubcap Joes, YouTube person, crazy NY driver. So I mean, if I say there's reason to look up and wonder what's going on, there is a reason. In one of the Facebook groups the other day, somebody wrote in, the moderator wrote in a question that she wanted everyone to answer. And the question was this, if you could change one thing about eBay, what would it be? Just one thing. So everybody wrote in their ideas one by one. So I wrote in my idea and my idea was exactly this. Make the China sellers adhere to the same rules and regulations that the rest of us do. If an item is in China, they should say it's in China. I don't want to hear that they have a warehouse in the USA. I want to know where that item is originally coming from. If the item is a cheap knockoff replica, it should say that. It shouldn't be tried to pass off as a factory original or name brand or Gucci or Rolex or whatever they're trying to pass it off as. In other words, make them play by the rules that we play by. Do you know of the hundreds and hundreds of comments that were on this thread, mine got more likes than any other comment because the eBay sellers are sick of it and I'm sick of it. These China sellers are locusts, they're running rampant and they're ruining it. I can't even do a search on eBay and eBay Modus without getting all this China crap. And it's true, a lot of the stuff is warehoused in the United States. These guys are putting their location as United States and that's why I can't exclude them, but it's still spamming. I did a video, a video about this two years ago, I think, and I'm very tempted to do another screenshot video about how eBay Motors is being stammed, spammed with China crap. If you guys would like to see that, let me know and I'll get it out during the week. If not, I won't. The China sellers just seem to be ruining it for the rest of us. I have no problem abiding by eBay rules. I'd like to see everybody else do so. And the fact that the United States Post Office is offering them unreal cheap shipping, these e-packets to the United States, it's just a slap in the face. That's not eBay's fault. No, I don't say it is. That's the post office's fault. I don't know why they do it. It's just plain wrong. That being said, let's go over today's salient points. I'd like to hear your comments on them, on any or all of them. Number one, the Danger Dolan video about the 10 internet trolls who were shockingly exposed. You have the option to comment on my video or on his video or both. Please notice that his video was only put up two or three days ago and it's got over 400,000 views. This guy is a YouTube star. Next, my bad seller. The one we talked about last week. 90% of you guys said I should nag him. And quite frankly, I agree, I agree with you guys and I really feel that I should, but I want to try and sway that 10% over. Keeping in mind the new information I'm revealing now. One was that this person started the auction really low and I got the item at the minimum price. And number two, that this person has no compunction about negging and neutraling their sellers. I told you they left three, ne three negs and six neutrals for their sellers. I mean, right is right, guys. 
Now with that new information, have any of you 10 percenters changed your mind? Comment below. If you could change one thing about eBay, what would my guest account story? Have any of you guys ever heard such a thing before? Do you think that the person who I spoke to, the eBay rep, was maybe a little on the inexperienced side telling me what he told me? You know, that I should tell the guy to call eBay? You would think that eBay would send these guys out a notice. I just don't get it. And lastly, site issues. You guys who had trouble signing into your accounts last night, Thursday night, I want to hear from you or anybody who's experiencing site issues. Do you have any ideas what could be done about this, what should be done about this, so we could pass this along to the higher ups in eBay? Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver, you're not. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. If it's been helpful to you, slap a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week right here on the Crazy New York Driver Show. Rock on!